Today we're talking about sexual assault, which is a very serious offence, no matter how you look at it. So many of our youths, our elders, they have not learned the proper skills of relationship. It is not just women who are sexually assaulted. Oh, yes. Men are also being sexually assaulted by women. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Amazons. Thank you very much, a wonderful audience. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Amazons. And today we're talking about sexual assault, which is a very serious offense, no matter how you look at it. But before we delve into that, I'd like to welcome my co-anchors, Dolako and Aisha. <laughs> Looking gorgeous as ever. Looking beautiful, bimbo. I know, actually. <laughs> okay. Sexual assault, what is that? You know, it, it can be very confusing because we have different things. We have sexual violence, sexual assault, abuse. But uh, sexual assault, what it is, it sort of incorporates uh, rape, mm -hmm. abuse, uh, anything that's forced, that's against your will. It doesn't have to be full penetration, which is usually oral, mm -hmm. uh, vaginal, or anal. It, it can also be just touching a child or a person in a sexual manner against their will. The key thing to sexual assault, it's, it's against your will, the victim's will. Um, for me, looking at it from a legal point of view, as far as I'm concerned, and according to the law, sexual assault is any unwanted advance. As long as it's not something that was, you know, that was encouraged or you actually wanted, someone makes any moves towards you. Okay, so walk, you're walking down the road and somebody whistles? in appreciation of how you look? For there to be an assault, there has to be some kind of, you know, uh, there has to be some kind of touching, there has to be some kind of thing going on. Say, so so me walking down the road and someone whistling, that person is not assaulting me. But if he does touch is, is you, that harassment? The, without... The, well, it could be harassment, but it becomes harassment when it's actually, when it affects you. You understand? It affect, maybe it affects verbal. your life. Yeah, but it could be verbal. But verbal in what sense? I mean, there's nothing wrong with a man walking up to a lady and saying, you're beautiful or I like the size of your whatever. There's, uh, to be honest, you know, Maybe yes. it becomes harassment when it's a constant thing. When it's constant and when it makes the victim uncomfortable. That's why when, it's, when, when we say it's an un unwanted advance. Unwanted. Because you do not want it. Well, the key point to, to, to any definition that we're going to give it is that it's unwanted. Yeah. It's against the victim's will. Yeah. And it, I will it, use it, the it, word victim. Case, Bimbo, I, I want to see, um, say that harassment, as I know it, assault, as I see it, is not the whistling when you're walking by. It's mm -hmm. not appreciation mm -hmm. of what, what it is that the, the person is perceived to be seeing. Mm -hmm. It is actually, in this instance, the assault of having contact without the other party's consent. Mm -hmm. having penetration without mm -hmm. the other party's, uh, party's consent, having knowledge of a minor mm -hmm. forcefully without the parents or even the, the, the young girl's consent. That, in this case, is what we mean by sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, which, what we're trying also to... Be, be, be called rape. Yes, so. but it's not only about penetration. It's also without penetration is what that, we're saying. That, that's what, that's what we're saying about assault. You yes. understand? Like GBH, grievous bodily damage. Anytime there is a, f there has to be a physical contact for anything to become an assault. You which know, is what we're, which is what be, we're agreeing on yeah, now. There has to be a physical contact. It doesn't necessarily have to be rape. Somebody grabbing a woman's, you know, p personal whatever. It, I did it see could be termed as a, you know, as a assault, sexual assault. I saw that happen there's once. There's a contact. Yeah. I did see that happen once. Uh, a bus conductor, they were driving past, and he brought his hand out of the bus <laughs> and grabbed and the woman's <laughs> chest. It, it, was, it was horrible. A, a few people laughed, but I didn't think it was funny. Because, come on, if that had happened to me, I'd be furious. I'd probably chase, remove my shoes yes. and chase the bus. <laughs> you know, so, Honestly. Um, so I, um, we're looking at sexual assault, and we're also looking at the different things that we do call assault. For instance, your little girl, someone comes to the house to visit you, it carries a child and is sitting with the child. And then he's moving every two seconds and basically rubbing the child against himself. <sighs> and these things do happen. That is assault. Mm. Okay. That's, that's this. 
It's just thinking about it. Now. It's horrible. Yeah. But it does happen. People thinking actually do that. Thinking about it now, you would think it's innocent. Yes, because it's yeah, shifting and right shifting. Now, the child is firmly know, held, I, held against him. Just it's not innocent. Just assimilating what you're describing now, Bimbo, I, I can visualize that it's actually what it is. You, you, you get it. Yeah. It's young people, what it is. Yeah, young boys and girls, you think you're being funky. You see a girl, you know her, you've been toasting her. She hasn't really answered you. You see her in a club or on her way to school, you grab her and you kiss her. It's an assault. She didn't ask you to kiss her. She didn't want the kiss. Or oh, wanted advance. As long as it's unwanted. <laughs> now, let's look at, we're looking at the damage that this can cause to anybody that's a victim. And one of the greatest problems that we have in this country is the fact that people do not come out and talk about it. No, yeah, no. Why don't they come out and talk about it? Because one, the society puts the blame on the victim. The victim is ashamed to come out and say, this is what has happened Shame. because, of, because mm -hmm. of the consequences. Yeah. If you are a woman, the family would even tell you not to own up to what has happened to you. We read in a newspaper some time ago where um, a bride on the eve of her wedding, uh, this bad man came to their home and uh, she got raped and her mother too. When they left, the girl started crying. Oh my God, I'm finished. My life is over. And the mother said to her, wiped her tears and slapped her left and right and said, listen to me, nothing happened. Nothing happened. You will get married tomorrow. Nothing happened here tonight. Wow. In that case, what do you say to that? Okay. Because if they owned up, the wedding is gone. We're still talking sexual assault. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Sexual relationship between a man and a woman is unarguably a icing on the cake, which makes their union thick. However, when desire for sex overrules reason and negotiation, Psychologists and social scientists will surely predict a breakdown of law and order occasioned by rape. Rape is sexual acts between two parties, but without one of the parties consenting to that act. It's a criminal offense under the criminal laws of Nigeria. In essence, rape is when one person pursues a sexual act on another who does not fully and freely consent to take part in the act. Unleashed against our women, you know. So this issue of rape is something that is very, very rampant. You will see even fathers raping their daughters. Rape can be discussed under three umbrellas. First, it's okay. rape is an abuse. Rape is a kind of barbaric behavior. Three, rape is an act of lack of civilization. It's anti-civilization behavior. However, as serious as the offense of rape is, some societal factors seem to work against efforts at curbing the menace. That we have where rape is concerned, the issue of people shying away. A father has his daughter raped, a sister is raped, a niece is raped, and nobody wants to talk about it because they feel that once you open up, you, the child or the daughter is going to be stigmatized. People keep quiet. Sometimes you find somebody who is a victim or in relation to a victim, and he goes to the police station to lodge a complaint about somebody who has been raped. And the relations go to beg and say, sorry now, we, is, uh, we are neighbors. We could have been your brother. Please forgive. We draw this. Let's settle this. And you find that the person who had reported to the police station now begins to develop cold feet. He does not want to follow the issue to a logical conclusion. Indecent or provocative dressing has also been adduced as a major reason for the cases of rape recorded in Nigeria. As a mother, as a legal practitioner, I think we can start from the very foundation, the basics from primary school level, let children be taught that it is an offense for a young man, for instance, to rape a lady without her consent, or for a lady to be raped without telling somebody about it. Because we see several girls who are raped and they keep quiet out of fear. But if they are taught from an early age that nobody has any right to touch you or defy you without your consent, they will speak out. And I'm happy what is happening. A lot of women are beginning to speak out about this kind of thing because whether you like it or not, rape is becoming a recurring decimal in the Nigerian society. On a daily basis, we hear of issues and incidents of rapes. 
in our streets, in our homes, in our, you know, name it. I think if we speak out, education, enlightenment campaign, let people learn to speak out and let people be educated from early age. Let them know that no rapist should be allowed to go unpunished. We add the other aspect of it, we call it bad culture transfer in the area of indecent dressing, in the area of alcoholism, in the area of teenagers going to drink without any control. In all, it is pertinent to say that decent sexual behavior devoid of bestial tendencies like rape defines man and stands him out as a rational being. Nothing is too much for everyone to do in ensuring that the society is better today than yesterday. Welcome back. You're still watching Amazons, and we're still talking about sexual assault. Now, we have a special guest in the house today, a clinical psychologist who's been practicing for 13 years, and she's going to shed more light on, on sexual assault. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dr. Chebuka Patricia. Doctor. Welcome Hello. to Amazon TV. Thank you for coming. Hello, madam. Good to see you. <laughs> you are very welcome to the show. We're talking about sexual assault today. Can you tell us in your experience as a doctor, uh, how many cases have you seen over the years? You've been practicing for 13 years. Okay, uh, the much I can remember now as a clinical psychologist and as a clinician is much more than 30 overall. But usually these 30 cases, they do not come to me or to us as a sexual assault. It is when an individual is overly affected as a result of the assault, that when they are experiencing anxiety reactions, mm. post-traumatic stress disorders, somatizations, depression. depression, and some symptoms of psychiatric conditions that they come to us. So during evaluation, we find out the history of the trauma, the event characteristics, and the comorbid uh, psychiatric conditions. Then we we'll now find out the factors that are influencing the after assault conditions. So within that, it helps uh, uh, through the history of trauma, we now discover that most of these patients have been assaulted sexually in the past. At one time or the other. other. So they don't actually come to you and say, oh, I've been assaulted, been assaulted and I need help. No, oh. due to the stigma attached to sexual assaults and uh, rape, the, our culture does not uh, encourage. encourage people encourage. speaking out yeah. so and that is why the problem is overly mm. recurring so the, the the cases you've seen as as a result of your own evaluation and investigation yes not mm. as a result of the patient coming to say this is what has happened no no to no, me no, no. so but do you know why that is so uh, the issue is because of the stigma as i said and again, as a result of the experience people get when they report these cases, mm. they are in, in mental health evaluation. They are assaulted twice mm. if they come to report such cases. At because the police station? Either or at the police station or even the lawyers mm. that they go uh, stand in for the offenders. So the, the kind of questions they will be asking the court. patients, the patient at court, will make them to um, how we keep relieving the it experience. Is, is Our Nigerian police, God bless them, because we do know that they are put upon, but they are not equipped to handle rape cases. But that's I'll, the first contact. Yes, that is the first contact. But, you know, when we know that a situation like this occurs, um, we know that, you know, these people are not equipped to handle this. It's time for us to start thinking outside the box for what to do for Nigerians. What's best for Nigerians, not what operates outside the world. Why don't we have rape centers? Do we have rape centers in Nigeria? Do we have a I'm, number you I'm can sorry, call? Doctor, first yeah, and foremost, when a victim gets raped, okay, in a civilized country, what's the victim supposed to do? You head to where? 
you the hospital. To the police station or the hospital because the police stations are equipped for okay. it. They are attached to hospitals. Okay. That when you get to report, mm -hmm. being in the same manner the event happened, okay. to showcase yourself to the station, and then pictures will be taken, taken. and the uh, evidence exhibit okay. of the part of the physical exhibit yeah, yeah. might be taken, of like tearing one's clothes torn, mm -hmm. uh, and, and if there is any laceration, okay. blood dropping, okay. then you, f after taking the report, the police will now refer you to the medical examiner okay. attached to police station. Okay. So okay. the medical exam examiner will go ahead to make his observations okay. and recommendations. Okay. Then after that, for a case that will later go to court, all these Evidence. issue evidences okay. will be collected and, and then sent okay, to court. For, for, to for those victims that, you know, uh, during investigation and um, uh, evaluation, mm -hmm. you do now establish that their condition is as a result of the trauma, you know, of rape or assault. What kind of therapy is available to them? We give them a psychological treatment called psychotherapy, mm -hmm. which on evaluation, mm -hmm. you will discover the level of effect okay. the person has. Mm -hmm. Then that will tell you whether it is a severe condition Mm. or a mild condition. If it is a severe condition, you have to stabilize that person with psychoactive drugs, psychiatric medication okay. to relieve him of the pains. Relieve her. Uh, relieve her, her of the pains and her, trauma. Aisha. Whether it's a man <laughs> or a woman, because a man can equally be raped. Mm -hmm. So after the stabilization, you now go ahead to give psychological uh, therapy. Okay. And that psychological therapy involves if the person, if there is presence of psych, uh, post-traumatic stress, mm -hmm. then you use a stress inoculation therapy okay. to relieve the person of the pains. Because at that point, there is what we call somatization, okay. mostly bodily complaints okay. that okay. can go in b uh, pains all over the body, headache, and um, even uh, insomnia. Mm. Mm. D then after that, uh, after the um, discovery of whether there is post-traumatic stress disorder, mm. whether there are anxiety reactions okay. and mm -hmm. um, depression, that will now further tell you whether the person will maintain the medication is already using and you go ahead to use what we call cognitive behavioral therapy okay. to make the person see reasons why you should not allow what happened to bring him, bring her down. Okay. okay. And uh, can I ask now, we, we do know that uh, the first place in Nigeria that most people would go to is a police station. Uh, do, are there any clinical psychologists attached to police stations? Is there a special rape department? or unit? Uh, ever since my practice, I've never heard of such. Heard of such. Interesting. I've never. We, 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 n uh, clinical psychology or psychological practice is mm -hmm. upcoming in Nigeria. Yes. We are the ones who are going out okay. to establish, educate the public that okay. this service, psychological services is the gap okay. that is missing between uh, medical uh, medical practice, practice uh -huh. and the uh, cultural and religious practice, practice okay. because okay. that gap has always been there. That okay. is why, when medical, when physical uh, uh, problems come up mm -hmm. and uh, nothing is detected, okay. when people are sent for mm -hmm. laboratory tests and nothing is detected, okay. they tend to assume that what they are suffering from is spiritual because it could not be dictated through laboratory tests. But that gap there is issue of mental health. Okay. So but when these people come, we use what we call psychodiagnostic tests mm. to dictate their problems. Mm -hmm. Anything that is missed by medical examination is captured by mental health examination. Okay. So because that gap was there, 
That was why the issue of spiritual attacks and all what not have been on the, over by the Africa. Nigerian pastors. Okay, on that note, we're going to take a short break <laughs> and we will be right back. We're still talking about sexual assault. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching Amazons. And we have Dr. Chebukai in the house with us. We're talking about sexual assault. Dr. Chebukai, it seems as if in, in recent times there's an increase in, in, in sexual assault. Because everywhere you turn now, you're hearing about one case or the other. And this wasn't the case five, six, seven, eight years ago. What, what's going on? <laughs> the reason is uh, simply because uh, so many of our youths our elders, they have not learned the proper skills of relationship. Hmm. And in that condition, some of them lack what it takes to talk to a lady. And in the, in the way to get around getting what they wanted, they go about using influence, like using alcohol, or using Indian hemp or other kinds of hard drugs in order to psych themselves up, in order to help themselves feel big, feel they have it now. And that makes them to go ahead to attack whosoever they want to attack. Yes. The, uh, one point I want to clear here is, issue of sexual assault is not only issue of rape. Rape is even in the, min in the minority, compared with what happens in other aspects of sexual assault. Mm. There is what we call sexual deviation disorder or sexual variation disorder. This sexual variation disorder is one, a case where an adult is sexually abusing a child. We call it pedophilia or pe call such people pedophiles. Mm -hmm. So they act on the innocence of the, these young ones who are minor. And because they do not have the skills to face adult ladies, they want to try their skills on the little ones. Mm. Okay. And this other is aspects is what we call free tourism, where men use items of women to receive mm. great uh, sexual gratification. They keep stealing bags, underwear. <laughs> shoes, underwears <laughs> oh my of God, women. That is horrible. Or even smelling unwashed on these okay. to get gratification. That is, that is, that there is other conditions that called is voyeurism, <laughs> where we call it peeping thumb as well, where people watch others having sex in order to get gratification. Many times they don't get into having sex themselves. They watch others in order to get gratification. Sorry, Dr. Doc, no, be, before Bingo. you ask Dr. Chebuka, I have two people in the audience that have been itching to ask questions. Sorry, Bingo. Let's just allow, I, let's allow our, our audience. audience. Okay. Okay. So, okay, go on. <laughs> that young man there who has a question for us, please, your name. My name is Chibweze. Chibweze, what's your question? Yes, uh, mine would have been a question if, um, if there was a legal person here. Because it's important, okay, it's important for us to understand and not be carried away by the fact that a man can be sexually assaulted but not raped. Excuse me? A man. You don't believe a man can, can be raped? A man cannot be raped because one of the ingredients for proving rape is penetration and you cannot penetrate a man. But except, except on the case of a fellow man through the annals. That's one. Then number two, um... I think our legal system is not also helping our victims in going about um, establishing their cases because the burden of proof is always heavy on rape cases. That's why a lot of persons, by the time they understand, sometimes some lawyers, there are some ingredients that will not be available. You were actually raped. But there are some ingredients your lawyer will want to establish that is available, which he knows that if, he does, if he's not able to establish it in the law court, he will not be able to make a headway. And your lawyer might be the one to advise you to drop the case. I think we need to review our legal system. I know most of them we borrowed from the English common law, and then we are practicing 
you know, most of them stick to census the way they are. I think we need to look at our own contemporary society, our present society, our peculiarities, so that we know how we can encourage and help people who are assaulted to be able to come out and pursue their case. Thank you. you, you, Thank you, you very much. It has a, a very, I don't know, put together yes. argument. But I, 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 the, I, first I thing about, the first thing I'd like to answer is that rape. Yes. Men are raped. Yes. It's when it's against your will, a sexual <laughs> act that is against yes, your, your will. will. <laughs> it, it doesn't only require penetration. Yeah, a man can be forced to have penetration <laughs> without forced. his consent, without yes. he, him willing to. And I'll tell you what. Do you guess I, it? I do know someone that such happens to a very long time ago. Till today, he still thinks about it. Till today, he still talks about it. And the thing you find out, that's another question, doctor. What we'll find out, this is for all of us in the house, is that it's usually people that know you. It's not outsiders. You know, yes, we, we do have the odd cases of armed robbers coming into your home and then raping or assaulting people in the house. But usually what we have is a long-standing family member or family well, friend or a brother, a cousin. It's usually done members. by someone you know. No. In Nigeria, I'm sorry, abroad, you get raped, you head to the hospital. The hospital because you need When you get to the, the hospital, evidence. the hospital will call the, the police. police. It's, it's, a no, it's not the other so way the around. The so you, because Nigeria. the first thing you want to do is you've been raped. You, okay. okay. You're thinking you, about could, your you think about disease. You think about all sort of things. So you go and seek medical no, for, for attention the, for first. Chibuka, we, we're you talking know. about the, the therapy for victims here. Now the victim has, you know, has been identified that this victim has been raped. It's been identified, you know, it's been proven that the psychological problems this victim is suffering from are uh, experiences, post-traumatic experiences from the rape. Mm. Do you, uh, as, yeah, depression. are those experiences, uh, you know, do you manage them with medication or do you manage them by talking to them or is it a combination of it's both? A, it's a combination of both if the condition is severe. If the condition is not severe, what makes the condition to be severe is past experience. If the person has been exposed to such conditions before, and there is a repeat, the person tends to feel, why her all the time? What mm -hmm. is happening? Mm -hmm. The pain is so much. And again, if someone wanted to preserve herself for her future husband, and in, in the course of doing that, she meets this problem, that person will be more affected than no somebody knows. who had been loose. Or oh, who's had sex. Let's not say loose. Let's mm. say somebody who's, who, who's mm. engaged I, I, in sexual intercourse. For someone who is experiencing rape situation constantly. That, that would be a very bad experience yeah. to be and raped then, constantly. For, yeah, it happens. It happens. Wow. It does happen. Have, it, constantly. We, we you know it, about it, a case you, you know, of you know a mother of who was raped, got a child from the rape, and the girl, the child she got is also suffering from the situation as a mother. Hmm. You know, yeah. one of the reasons why an incident can occur where somebody is repeatedly raped, one of the tools of the offenders mm -hmm. is they will threaten the victim mm -hmm. because actually a case of rape is not actually uh, sexual activities mm -hmm. being carried out. Mm -hmm. is a violence expressed in sex. Mm -hmm. Very true. So. Yeah. What they do is they want to threaten, humiliate, and establish control over the victim. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I stand to be corrected. You said it's a violence expressed during through sex. sex. Through sex. sex. Through it's sex. an expression of violence. Okay. Is, that's sex. why it's a, a, a criminal tool. offense. Okay. Sex, is a, is a sex a uh, rape okay. is a sexual violence mm -hmm. expressed. Okay. Or, or rape violence. is a violence expressed so through sex. So it's a form sex. of violence sex. Yes, it's not actually sex, sex in itself so, because course. there is, what is the meaning of sex? There should be negotiation, of concept, or mutual understanding, course, agreement yes. between the two. Very yes. True. So yes. that when they get into the act, both parties will enjoy the mm -hmm. act. Very of course. But in this case, what the, even the offender is not carrying it out in order mm -hmm. to receive gratification is to show control. Intimidation. And intimidate and humiliate mm. the okay. victim. So in that on, case, on that note, we're going, <laughs> 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 going to take a <laughs> short break. On that note, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be asking Dr. Chebuka, can um, a man 
express this okay hold on gratification we'll be right back violence. hold on don't go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> Although societal factors continue to pose obstacles to efforts at combating the menace of rape in Nigeria, everyone agrees that it does a grievous damage to the life of the victim. As women, it's something we don't even like to think of because it is so horrendous. It is probably, in my opinion, the worst thing that can happen to a woman. It is bad enough if you are hurt, if you are beaten by anybody. But if you are raped, that is a violation of what you hold most dear. Something like sex is not something that you just do anyhow for most women. And for somebody to force you into that kind of situation using all sorts of violent means to subjugate you, subjugate you and then actually having his way against your will is the most terrifying thing I think most women can ever think of. It destroys her not just physically but psychologically. It's when such type of violence is inflicted on you and you cannot talk about it, it is worse. It is better if you can talk about it. And let me tell you, it's just a matter of cultural differences. Here, you are regarded as, you know, there's this feeling that if you are raped, you are the cause. With such a damning and destructive effect, it goes without saying that rape victims are depraved people who need some help in form of therapy. When a, a, a rape case is reported, that victim needs immediate attention. And I stress immediate. Because even if they're stopped from committing suicide, you can imagine they are still suicidal. They're still having nightmares. So you can give the necessary help. There's additional trauma apart from the trauma of the actual physical rape imposed by members of the society who may not understand to what extent they're inflicting this further grievous trauma on the victim and the family. And may I stress and the family because in any treatment the family also has to be involved. We don't have enough trained counsellors to do this job and how do they get in touch we do have a very good service in Lagos State the office of the public defender they're doing a fantastic job since uh, violence against women uh, has started coming out of the closet you know before you don't even talk about it you won't even get people to come and own up that they, they have been violated since it came out of the closet a lot of organizations are now trying to provide uh, support services, services for survivors of uh, violence, including rape. So I know some organizations that are providing services, but uh, incidentally, because of the extent, the magnitude of the problem, I don't think these services are enough. Unfortunately, it does appear that there are no caregivers, or at least the efforts at providing therapy to revive victims from the traumatic experience are grossly inadequate. The Lagos state government has um, a shelter. Okay. Yes, it has a shelter for, for women, for battered women, for victims of domestic violence. But whether such a shelter also caters for uh, survivors of other forms of violence, I don't know. Because we are talking about rape now. If somebody has been raped, then you go to a shelter that is for victims of uh, domestic violence and you say you need counseling or something, come some kind of help uh, because you have been raped. Will the person be listened to? Will the person be attended to? So it's an issue we should raise because I've, I'm talking about support, support services. Actually, these support services I'm talking about are mainly for victims of domestic violence. We need to train social workers that are actually specialists 
in rehabilitation of rape victims. It's very important. Even though Lagos State has shelter accommodation for victims of not just rape, but for um, 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 domestic, domestic violence. violence in general. In the final analysis, the conclusion to be drawn is that enough emphasis is not placed on the travels of the victim who is left to bear the psychological trauma alone. The time is now for attitudinal change towards facilitating the therapy of care to serve as a soothing balm that will help victims of rape out of the world of gloom they find themselves. Welcome back to Amazon, and we are discussing today sexual assault. Uh, we have another person in the audience, a long, young lady that would like to ask a question. Please stand up. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tosin Disu. Um, I would like to ask, in a situation where I'm a poor girl, and I'm still with a rich family, like probably maybe I'm put like, like a younger one, or probably I came there to work for them, and one of their sons raped me, and I actually went to the police station to report the matter and they fail because they are rich and they actually use money to cover up the case who comes out to fight for me like if any other lady hears my story and he knows probably he stays the same kind of situation like my own she would definitely do not want to come out like it's still just going to be the same thing that will happen to me of or something course. that situation what should that lady do thank you the uh, the situation that you've just described is a horrible one because uh, she's obviously dependent on these people and they're taking advantage also using their money to cover up a crime. But I'll tell the person, we do have organizations in Nigeria that are ready at any point in time to help. For all of us, I say this to everybody I know, if you're my friend, younger or older, I say if you want to know something and you don't know it, it's either you ask people or you Google it. Google. Uh, rape centers in Nigeria. Rape centers number. It's, it's that easy. But if you do go to our website, we will have more details on the places that you can go to and the people that you can talk to. Nobody is alone in a situation like this. You have people out there who want to help. The only reason that you don't receive help is that nobody comes out to talk about it. And in a situation like that, like you've just described, it's a sad thing because it was straight to the police station and from there the whole thing was covered. Mm -hmm. Nothing was heard after that. But there are centers that are there, ready, able, willing to help. Okay, I, I know mm -hmm. Dolapo is burning to ask a question. Dolapo, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Actually, um, you, you said you're into victim therapy. You mentioned the fact that the gap between the medical and the religion is the psychological thing and that's what you are doing and it's been burning in my heart since you said that that okay you're trying to encourage it you're beginning to make people aware that you know what when you hear the word psychology it's not just about madness oh, or no, mental no no, 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 no because no. you know in Nigeria when you, once you hear psychology you think oh the person has gone off you know now in as much as you are creating this victim therapy thing to actually look at these people who are exhibiting you know, symptoms of being abused, maybe back then when they were younger and everything. I would like to encourage you and your organization that don't just treat the victim. You need to remember the perpetrators as well. Those people will go about raping people. Like you said, somebody sniffing someone's pants, someone trying to take control a woman in order to actually abuse her physically. There must be something wrong with them for them to also begin to exhibit such you know, uh, um, a, 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 a attitudes as well. Yes. So is there like a pr prison program? Because I know some of these criminals are in prison. Is there like a prison program where you um, do visit the prison to counsel some of these people and try to sort them uh, out? Actually, I don't have um, any such organization on ground. I work for the military. Okay. I'm a clinical psychologist for the military, okay. the defense. Okay. And uh, such cases, because we manage both civilian and uh, the military. So when such cases come, we handle them. So in issue of treating the, vi the offender, mm. uh, is when, you know, an, an offender is a, a case of the courts, belongs to the courts. Mm. 
uh, if the court refers such people to us, we evaluate and manage them. Because okay. the sense of referral is for you to manage, apart from discovering everything that happened, manage the situation as well. And clinical psychology or psychologists mm -hmm. handle issues of abnormal behavior mm -hmm. in the general population. Mm -hmm. It's not about when people have started having psychiatric condition. But you find out that in Nigeria, because of this issue of spirituality, Mm -hmm. understanding of the spirituality that when something is happening to you and you cannot interpret explain it. and explain it then obviously that issue is spiritual mm -hmm. so because of that the so many churches are growing fat on that but the actual issue is we evaluate the normal population mm -hmm. and find out certain psychological underpinning mm -hmm. that is affecting them okay. and relieve them of that before it gets to psychiatric condition. Mm -hmm. But you find out that people will never come for these evaluations mm -hmm. until they have stayed so long in the problem that it has started affecting them uh, severely. Mm. And in such a condition, they come to us when they are already psychiatric patients. Wow. Okay. Rather than getting the treatment, uh, the treatment immediate, immediately after to you... To prevent psychiatric uh, okay. conditions Thank from occurring. Thank you so okay. much, Dr. Chebuka. <laughs> you have been amazing. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching Amazon, and we're talking about sexual assault, which is, as we'd heard from Dr. Chibuka, uh, it's, it's, it's what you call a cesspool. Because le let's be truthful, the first thing I think about in cases like this are the people who are suffering, the people who've been assaulted, mm. never the people who are assaulting them. And to realize that some of them also need help, I don't know, makes me feel a bit funny. I have to be truthful. You mean those who assault people? Yes. I mean, we, we do know that for you to do something that horrible, there must be something wrong somewhere. But, you know, I just never think about the fact that they need help. And having, discussing with Dr. Chebuka today, that's just what he brought out to me, that these people do need help as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, you get, if you get into the mind of, most people who as assault peop other people, mm. maybe they were born into that kind of situation. Maybe they witnessed it as the norm when they were growing up. Or maybe where they have been abused, abused themselves. You know, yes. this is where the therapy really works because you have to get into the mind, the psychology mm. of those who are really committing this, this terrible, horrible action. Mm. And like we said before, it, it's not only rape. We, we do talk a lot about rape, but what Dr. Chibuka was telling me that sexual assault itself, minus rape, is on the rise. I think you can't, you, I, I think you can't treat a problem without actually treating the root of the problem, which was what I was saying. I'm going back to what I said before. It's okay for you to have the victim therapy. What about these perpetrators? These children or this men who go about sniffing and doing all the things that he said they did, you know, what about them? What about actually putting something in place to actually stop this? I think I saw it in a movie or something. There was a guy who walked into a, a psychology uh, office and said, you know what, every time I live, very, I live very, very near a kindergarten school, I don't like the feeling I get when I see kids walking into the school. I need help. Yes, but and he got help from that. Yes, but that's in a different kind of w country, isn't it? Because first and foremost, for you to agree that they're, 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 they're people doing these things, you have to agree that they're victims. Mm. And if the victims don't come out to talk, then nothing has happened. It, it seems to be a vicious... So we need to get victims to come out and talk. Look, no, no, one yeah, out... The, the victims and those who are perpetrating the act... I would start they, they, with the victims. They also need help. I, I agree with you yeah. totally. I, I would start with the victims because there has to be somebody who will stand up and say, you know what? I am being intimidated. I am being assaulted. I am, it's, it's, things are happening to me that I have no control over. I am unhappy. I need help. Like, I'll tell you what out there. I've heard so many cases. I have met so many people who've been assaulted. All kinds of things have happened to them. And you know what? You Owe it to yourself to come out and say, this happened to me. I understand the guilt. 
I understand the shame because of the country that we lived in, but, but that we live in, because of this country that we live in. But we need, it, it has to get to a point where we say, you know what? My life is more important than what people think. I am more important than people out there, than what they think, what they see or don't see. Because no matter what you do in this life, people will always talk about you. That is a fact. I am pleading with anyone out there who's watching, if you're being assaulted, if you've been assaulted, please seek help. That's all for today. You've been watching Amazon, so we've been talking about sexual assault. <laughs> we'll see you soon.